Welcome to the Lost Rewatch. I'm joined by Melissa and Eric. How's it going, guys? Hello. Hello. It's good. It's good. Is it good? Is it good? So it, we always start off with talking about how you guys get into loss and tell your stories and what it meant to you, whatever whatever you want to do. We can start with uh, Melissa. You want to go first? Sure. Um, I was a big fan of Lost back in the day when it first came out. I actually had briefly had a Lost podcast uh, that like sort of, it was called Totally Lost. It was with uh, John Noe and oh, uh, yeah. Sims. It, we used to just watch and then record in the commercials, but we just sort of fizzled. <laughs> but it was super fun. Um, and I remember just being deep in that, in that, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, mystery piece of the fandom when everybody was trying to figure out what was going on? on? Very much like Harry Potter, which is my dear heart fandom. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I remember joining. I was introduced to it by my girlfriend at the time, Alice. She had lent me the first season of Lost on DVD when it was out. So I missed the first season. I missed um, it airing and like the initial fan reaction and and, and hype for it. But uh I remember being hooked just after seeing the pilot, like the two hour pilot, like what a great pilot that was. To and this day, one of the best, sorry, to this day, one of the best pilots ever. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, absolutely. And I don't, I don't know how you top it, to be honest with you. It'd be very hard. You'd have to let Greg Grunberg live or something. To <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, 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 I just, I, you know, and I remember watching it in like a ridiculously short amount of time, the first 22 episodes or whatever, but fortunately season two was only a couple weeks away. So I think I started watching when it aired, like in season two and yeah, all the way through to the end, I was just blown away by lost. Yeah. And we were, we, uh, Eric and I were already podcasters and already deep in the Harry Potter online fandom at the time, which was in full swing when this came out. So it was right in that yeah. big, thick, fun Harry Potter universe time when nobody knew how the end was, how the end was going to work out. And people loved coming to the internet to discuss those theories and right. lost was like a great extension of that, that energy. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty much the same muscle to flex like it really is. but 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 lost lost as a as a tv show that that tantalized the audience much like harry potter the books did mm -hmm. uh you know having it in that different medium was so made it seem so different you know and made it seem and and but i mean i remember yeah the message boards the fuselage i mean they're they're all they're <laughs> all ingredients <laughs> and and things how was it gonna end podcasts for it exactly so yeah. um and then i think the we actually, all three of us, were at the Jay and Jack finale party in LA we in 2010 are... when the when the show ended, and uh, what a what a special finale and 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 night that was. That was um, great. That party yeah, that you guys threw. I don't think anyone that was there hated the episode. No, I, I just think it was the experience because people were just you know they were because I, I was worried that people because we were watching the West Coast feed. That people on the East Coast would, you know, you get a, you know, a Twitter message or a, a message anyway, and say, you know, what had happened. But no one, no one spoiled anybody. It was just uh, perfect. This is, this is really interesting because there's a lot of finales now that people people are much more uh, comfortable being really vocal about dislike of their fandom. I think than they were even back then. But Lost might have been the first one that the ending was so polarizing. I'm not saying like first story ever, but first one that certainly was so um, public and watched, you know? Yeah. Like yeah, Harry definitely. Potter was a little bit too, but uh, there, it was less, I think less so. Lost uh, as a show kind of was started to crumble under its own weight after season three, I think, because every season was, I mean, this is how my pitch for lost is always not that it failed towards the end. Cause I love the ending of lost all to this day. I feel like not many people understood it, but the yeah. show, the show I think was fundamentally about something different every year. Mm -hmm. And so I think it definitely lost viewers every year. Like there were people, like I knew people, not close friends, but I knew people who stopped watching. They're like, I can't get into that anymore. And so by season six, we had already had like a culling. And then so I wasn't exactly that surprised when people were polarized about the end of Lost because I was like, well, every, you know, I, I thought it was a bold move. I thought it was great, a good explanation. But um, but yeah, I think it kind of crumbled under its own weight in a way. And like the reason it was polarizing is that different people wanted something different out of right. the show. Everybody wanted a different ending. And if yeah. you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't get your ending, they were like, 
that that sucked. Yeah. Well, like Harry yeah. Potter, I think that's an apt comparison too. Like these these things that were like the global phenomenons that mm-hmm. uh, with the internet helped bring into you know really the upper upper tier of uh, popularity. Yeah, yeah, yeah it definitely benefited from that early internet energy the same way that Harry Potter did. We were figuring out fan forums and figuring out podcasts right. and figuring out how to use the internet in the way uh that we wanted as fans and lost was right right in that pocket you know um Definitely. yeah it was it was great it was a great time yeah well it was a fun time but like you said it was so it's so different like i said especially for me because i'm older so <laughs> you, you have these things like message boards like i gotta do what and i get it because jay would say yo you gotta go do that i go yeah okay <laughs> I'll, I'll go on there and you know it's just like it, it was a whole different you know world for me because I was you you know you go to work you talk about the show and then you know that was it but the, the internet you, you know you had people from Germany and Japan you were talking to about this crazy show and like you said Harry Potter same way yeah. it's just it's just a crazy it's just crazy how that works but uh makes this sh- makes the show a better experience I always I always said I'm glad I watched Lost as because I was like you uh, Eric I watched it after the first season Jay and I got Jay got the DVDs we went through it and I said, there's no way we're going to be able to catch up before it aired. I think it was like a week away and we finished it in a weekend. Oh, just couldn't stop watching. It was like, yeah. next, 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 next. It was like, oh my God, we got to find Lots out, got to find out, got to find out. Well, now I need some sleep. Such a fun show to binge. Such yeah. a fun show. Yeah. To but you think it was better that, because, you know, say it was it, today, if it was put on Netflix and you have the same storyline that it never happened, it, I think it would ruin it because you have. There's so much in loss that you have to keep up with that if you, you'd have to, cause you're going to go, I'll get to watch the next show. I'll go back and watch that one. Right. You know, the first one, I think you just would mess too much stuff. Whereas here you, I, I can remember watching it two, three, four times. Yeah. In a week. Oh yeah. Between the next episode airing. I'm, yeah, I'm, absolutely. And, and you forget about some of the more nuanced, like subtle hints and clues that, that get picked up. Um, I'll have more to say on that when we talk about one of these episodes, cause there were a couple of, in in episode mystery setup and rev- resolution, and I was like, "Oh, they didn't make his way to season and a half to figure out who burned the raft." I was, <laughs> it's like, I was like, "That was answered the same episode." I was like, "I was blown away." I was blown away by it because usually, I mean, that was the thing with Lost. You'd wait, you'd have to wait. There was always a cliffhanger. There was always, this, particularly season yeah. two onward, there was just <sighs> cut to the whole thing, and it was it was it was everyone's favorite mystery show. But I think overall, just what sticks with me. And Game of Thrones had this to some extent too, which to a big extent was the character development. You cared about yeah. the characters and you cared right. about the show. Yeah, I think um, it is one of the only really heavily clue laden shows that we've seen. Um, clue like plotted like a novel. It mm. really, it, or at least it felt it had that feel that it was plot that it was like plotted the same as a novel. I don't know if everything sort of tied together the way you have to in a novel. But it definitely had that um, that kind of idea that that the 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 master hand behind it knows everything, which right. is my favorite way to experience a story. Yeah, same. Well, you mentioned the character development, and that's what I always thought hurt uh, Flash Forward. So I, I remember the first half first half of the season, I go, I don't care about anybody. I mean, I literally get, I could care about anybody, but the second half they finally got smart, but it was too late. Yeah, they'd already. Uh, but so that's it's for lost and that's what makes the pilot so great right off the bat you have a story i care about you have characters i care about you have everything was interesting it's that's that's hard for any tv show to do but they they pulled it off i get to watch the rest of flash forward i I gave it about six episodes and just got busy yeah it said it got better it got because jay and i podcast about it and it really did get better at the end that's great it was too late because people stopped watching it so there's yeah. gonna be the next lost. Yeah, well, I, I you know I never watched it. Oh yeah. There's so many next losts and next Harry Potter. Right. You get, you get a little like yes. uh, can't do them all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely can't do them all. And and that was the show that was very much ABC was marketing it as the next lost. Right. Yes. Um, but I think I'm just grateful that Lost was able to reach a conclusion, even if people weren't happy with it. The fact that even this early on and the mysteries and and son's father and things like the longer, slower boil plot lines are the fact that they had some kind of conclusion at all made me very happy. Like I was watching the episode going, I'm so glad the show wasn't canceled before it like 
came to a yeah. natural conclusion because not all shows get that. There's a lot of beloved shows getting canceled nowadays. Yeah. Right. Um, I more and more I'm happier when shows say, you know what? We've had four great seasons. We're in our fifth and we're done. Like yeah. the good place is doing that. Lucifer yes. is doing that. And it's so much better than petering out to a conclusion that then you have to get back to. Again, it's that feeling of the the master creator knows everything and it's taking mm -hmm. you to a pre a predestined conclusion, which I love. You don't want to show like Dexter. Uh, no. <laughs> That's sad. Oh, Dexter. Huh. Four great years, Dexter, and then you. Well, actually, I didn't I, hate it. I didn't, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate that, but the last season, I, I literally was, my wife and I were watching, going, will you stick with this? Yeah, we, okay, it's three more episodes ago. I, I, I couldn't wait for it to end. And then, the, of course, the way it ended was terrible. And I was just like, all right. <laughs> I just, it's sad because it show, I, I would always put that in my top 10 shows because the last season was so bad. Mm. I can't, I can't do it. I, I never hated it as much as other people hated it. I hated it. I was quite I was quite into it the first couple seasons. And that was yeah. another one where I watched the first one on DVD once it was out. But then when it was airing, I remember season two was my favorite. But when Trinity came along, I was glued to my set. Right. But, yeah. It definitely got rough in there. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. It was risky and cool. And oh, it definitely risky. Yeah. But the concept was because I think Jay's the one that told me about it. I said, oh, it's a, I, what's about? He goes, it's about a serial killer. I go. Okay, and then, but he's a good guy. I right. go. Uh, you, you're losing, you're losing me on that one. But anyway, it just, yeah. I'm, I'm glad, like you said, like the good place is ending after four. I mean, mm -hmm. I enjoy it, but I love the know, good you, place. I'm gonna be so sad when it's gone. Yeah, but but I'm you go six, seven seasons. Yeah. 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 Anyway, anything else going on in your guys' life? Do you guys busy with work? Uh, boy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so fun to be seeing you, Melissa, now because I'm going to see you in like four days. <laughs> I know, it's exciting. So Eric and I are going to be together again this week at LeakyCon Boston, which will be over before this comes out. But um, LeakyCon is our Harry Potter convention that we are still doing after 10 years. So, uh, it's our 10-year anniversary this week. So we're really, well, not this week, but this event is our 10-year anniversary event. So we're really excited for that. Um, I also, my company runs a lot of conventions now. So we do, and the idea of a lost con has come up trust me i just uh don't know if it's got the pull to get people you know what i mean um and we do I, a think it I think it would I, you gotta scale it right you know you gotta like you have to do it in hawaii melissa i know and then there's ryan at, down there who would who would be great i think he did some, i don't know um then we also <laughs> do a game of thrones one there's there's a lot uh and then i'm on a bunch of podcasts still for all this time Pottercast is still going. I'm on one called um, Make New Mistakes, which is about everything you screw up in business, which is super fun. And then I've been doing one called, it, it, I, I don't sleep. There's no sleep. Um, I've been doing one called Extraneous, which is about, it's a, it's a podcast that takes stories and like really digs down and like really does deep dives the same way we did with Pottercast. Um, but we're focusing on his dark materials right now, which mm. I love so much and it's been a, such a delight to sort of give it the, the old Potter guest treatment and really, really pick it apart chapter by chapter. And it's been, Oh, so great. So we're getting ready for the um, premiere of that. And that's just, you know, that's like probably 60% of what else is going on. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. Well, uh, much fan, the same you know? here. Lots of podcasts here. Uh, my uh, podcast I edit for the improvised Star Trek podcast is uh, ending. They've been going for nine years, I want to say, and improvised Star Trek. Oh, that's Just the name. Cool. Improvised Star Trek, and that's. Um, but it's 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 been a blast. I've been doing um, sound effects. It's it's fully improvised, but then we add like music, sound effects, ambient noise, make scenes out of it. So it's like an audio drama, but it's a comedy. Uh, really just a blast. I've been with them since 2014 and they are ending it on their terms because uh, it's been forever, 218, 219 episodes so far. Uh -huh. So that's ending in two months uh, or no, next month. And then uh, another podcast I edit, HR Unconfidential with two uh, human resource managers is always an educational experience. I'm not hosting it, but I'm just editing, listening to what they're talking about. And it's always usually something very interesting. Uh, and then MuggleCast is still going weekly, and we're looking uh, very forward to our live at LeakyCon next Sunday morning. Exciting. Should be a good time. Yeah. It's Get a lot of people out there for LeakyCon, a lot of uh, Harry Potter people. Oh, oh yeah. 
um, that we were doing. We're doing another one. We're always doing another one. So just go to LukeyCon.com. We'll be in Orlando <laughs> next year again, which will be really exciting. Going back nice. home. Back home to Orlando. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Are you guys ready for Lost? Ready. Absolutely. All right. We our first episode was in translation. Whatever you guys want to. Any thoughts? Any uh, notes you took? <laughs> Eric took notes. <laughs> And I didn't. Uh, the above RE podcast. <laughs> Let's start with. So this isn't the only episode to feature Jin and Son with like this tiny little thread of marital abuse that I'm not sure has aged terribly well. I mean, it it deliberately it didn't age well when it aired, but I'm saying right. like oh, over time. It was like, oh, wow, like Jin, before he learned English, before you really get into the show, this episode, I think, d did a lot of headway into making him a more multifaceted character. But it's like episode 19 of this, of, this, of season one. So it's like, you know, I having not rewatched season one, I don't know how well this subplot aged, but Jin was very abusive. And I remember just not liking him through most of season one. Yeah, yeah. the same way. Yeah. Um. Um, Google has reminded me of this episode, which actually I remember. I remember very clearly now that I remember which episode this is. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm so sorry that I didn't watch it ahead of time. Uh, <laughs> but I also remember um, this was one of the ways that Lost really showed how it was able to subvert our expectations, meet our expectations in some respects, and then subvert them. So over time, you know, like how Jin was with son was you know it's terrible and we wouldn't th that would be even harder to portray today uh but over time they added so many layers of complexity with Jin that this was just such as like a foundational setting stone um and it's really a testament that they were willing to sort of unflinchingly look at this kind of relationship i it was awesome well not the relationship wasn't awesome we'll say well there, there's even a scene where they go I forget it was a Kate and Jack. Someone goes, "Oh, they're fighting again," right? <laughs> because, because you know, they're just they're just fighting, and they're, you're speaking Korean, and and nobody speaks Korean, and they're just going back and forth, back and forth. And you just tell how uncomfortable everybody is on, you know, the survivors are, because it, it is it's like real life. You know, you around people that are fighting all the time. It's no it's no fun to be around them. But I was like you, Eric. I I couldn't stand Jin at first, but that's what Lost did. Is they would take a character you didn't like. And by the end, you liked him, him or her. I'm not sure where I wound up on Ben Linus, but everybody else, I genuinely uh, <laughs> that's true with. I like the whole way through. Uh, yeah, the the that was their identity to everybody else that didn't know that Son could speak English. And there were two. I remember I there I re, I'm reminded oh. that Kate knew and Michael knew. I think by right. accident, by, by the time the episode opens up, and then at the end, she's got to like reveal it to kind of save Jin some pain and now everyone knows and it's it's actually just thrilling watching that secret play out um to its conclusion and of course there's much more like we don't know exactly why Sin son learned english which is one of my favorite aspects of of her whole backstory um with the potential affair but what it does what the episode does really well is is reveal that secret and also show what kind of a price that that Jin had to pay to be her husband. And that's yeah. ultimately why it's more of a sympathetic move is like yeah. he became a vicious person, but it was because her father is a vicious person right. and he had to make a lot of sacrifices to be with her. Yeah. It's a very, um, it's a very complex character. It's a very brutal uh, societal structure that, that they're trying to portray. Um, and yeah, all you, all you, all it does is just draw us further in to their relationship, which becomes so central to the the plot and the as they, you know as it goes. A lot of tender moments between Said and Shannon in this episode. Yes. That that blew my mind because I thought that was strictly like a shoe in middle of season two, right before she did kind of thing, and I forgot that like the groundwork for that had been laid pretty early. Um. I'm forgetting what the scene was specifically, but they, 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 she, he helps her build a tent. He goes and consults Boone and asks for Boone's permission, or okay. not really permission, but he's like, "Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm into your sister." Um, so like, really, just some interesting, <laughs> interesting stuff. Good, good scene work. Like Boone, I miss Boone. Like, right? any, any old season Boone. You're like, 
man, what a what a character. Like him and Walt, you get so much, you get a little bit of Boone, but you get so much more Walt. And I'm just like, these are the characters that Lost did not necessarily get to completely service every way you went, the whole way, the whole way. But well, Boone, mean, Boone was the first big death on the show. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and you're like going, no, not Boone. Right. But now that we know what we know, did he die? Like what, what happened? Do we have any answers on what it meant to die in this universe? Was he in fact the sacrifice the island demanded? <laughs> or was that Locke Locke was. being manipulated? I mean, Locke is so manipulative, like him sticking I mean, he he tells uh Shannon that she's just should do her own thing, make her own music, if you will. But yeah. it's actually an attempt because he knows that Boone's still hooked on her to get Boone to be more isolated and so that he can manipulate Boone into uncovering the hatch. So it's a super master manipulative move uh, on Locke's part where he's pretending to like help his fellow castaways, but really they're just serving his means. He's Locke is really like a Dumbledore character. Uh, yes, he is. Yes, to, he is. To be honest, for sure. He and, and absolutely is. Yeah. Well, there's a few episodes earlier, where Locke tells Boone, "We have to get like Saeed. We need him on our side." So Locke is already trying to build people, get people. He tells this is what always frustrates frustrate me about Locke. Jack, you have to be the leader, but I'm gonna do everything I can to undermine you. And yep. so he, you know, he he wants everybody on his side so he can have his agenda going forward. It's like when the raft is burning, you know, he tells it's not Michael. It wasn't a uh, Jen, it was, they did it. They did it. You know, right. they don't want us up, but he's the one that smacks Saeed upside the head when they were trying to do the uh, transmission signal. So Locke has, Locke has an agenda, and but that's Locke's agenda is to get people on his side. Yeah. Yeah. It's just really twisted to see all that. But, but it's great because these characters do have their own motivations. And uh, again, with the mystery, like when he asks Walt to the end, so why did you burn the raft? I mean, I audibly gasped. was like, what? <laughs> um, then Walt's like, yeah, I'm tired of moving, which, okay, whatever. But <laughs> All right, Walt, like, seriously. You realize you could have killed people. He's a kid. He's a kid, but he's going to choose this moment to stage his rebellion. Great, great job. Yeah, Great you, job. you didn't throw the key, the keys in the storm in the storm drain or something. You, you actively right. <laughs> set fire to a to the house and the motive. I mean, it's just it's and just, someone that, got beat up for it too. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the whole thing is yeah. Uh, watching Walt shocked and kind of stunned at the when when the raft is burning in front of him, I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. The camera spend that time to kind of show us that maybe he got in a little over his head. A little bit, but he's able enough with Locke because that's the man he trusts to like come clean right. and just kind of admit kind of what he did and, and take ownership of his actions, which ultimately is obviously very important. But now Michael, we never Michael never finds out it was Walt, does he? I don't think so. I don't I, I don't I, I don't, don't think, think so. so. And you know what? Speaking of I want to talk about Michael's like over well, Michael in this episode, but also his overall arc. When he initially tries to break up the Sun and Jin fight, and then Sun slaps him, and he's shocked. I'm just like, man, Michael can't catch a break. No, because he now he he gets it. They they make up a little later. She's able to say, well, like I saved your life. <laughs> I helped you out by doing that. But it's just that Michael is often on the show in that position where he thinks he's doing the right thing for the right reasons. And then he's just constantly not being allowed to really like get that win. Yeah. Which, but, but was he, what I think he was doing that. I mean, if you see someone, a guy being physical with his wife, you, you step in. I thought he did the right thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but he got, he got nothing to show for it, you know, no. which, which is the show. I mean, but that means that's ultimately why he's like a good, good character. Although you can question the way he exited the show. Right. Um, because he ultimately he, he just toes the line between selfishness and selfless and like doing the right thing societally, I think, which is like maybe all the characters can be. So maybe that's not an interesting take, but um, but just his shocked face when when son slapped him. I'm like, yeah. my, my God, I, I was always pretty sympathetic to Michael just because eh, he's trying to be a dad or whatever. But um, he annoyed me from the from the jump. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, like sympathetic sure i you know all that you yeah. know but i yeah. also remember that he was was just so one note that 
even though it made sense for his character, yeah. it got so frustrating. It's my son. It's my son. Right. Every, like, in every episode, it's like, oh, it's right. And then it's Claire. It's like Claire with my, it's my baby, yeah. you know? Um, <laughs> and I, and it just, um, he was so good that I almost wanted him to mix it up, you know? Yeah. Be a little yeah. bit more complex. And a little That's bit fair. More, yeah. Uh, you can say, you know, how he said Jin be became a, you know, more likable character towards him. Michael was like reverse because the way he left, I, I, I didn't like him. When, I didn't like him when he left. I mean, he killed Libby. He killed uh, Anna Lucia yeah. For, yeah. for his own personal gain. I mean, so yeah. he kind of was the opposite. Yeah, but that was like better for me at the end. I was like, yes, yeah, <laughs> very interesting. Okay, like, this guy. I'll take it. You know? Well, I mean, but no reason. Maybe starting with this episode, he's a man who had been dr who started to be driven to desperation. And when when and when the people who are living on this island who get name dropped by Locke in his big speech in this episode end up showing up and taking his boy away, like there you go, you know, go home, you son. You 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 do not get to keep uh, the prizes, you know. Go home, and the fruits of your labor are you're in a worse state than when you begun. And it had, I think, at that point with Michael, because there's only like what. 15 episodes of him left before he leaves the show or maybe maybe it's the end of season two so like 20 25 episodes like he's he had had that happen to him with his wife before uh where you know he, he had to give up paternity uh custodial rights to his son and it's like uh just uh. seeing him not want to lose like completely fail twice i get it but i definitely didn't support the murder of anna lucia and libby it's just i i think the show really sh went to show how much desperation the others had created for all of our lost uh, tailies no not tailies losties. people losties yeah losties. remembering the old terms are coming back to me. <laughs> god it's such a deep yeah it's such a it's such a reminder of old fandom the, like we, you know the second episode the number is like that and i know we're not there yet but like what a moment you know, and what a thing that launched years of speculation. So all these oh, yeah. terms, all these terms sort of drove me crazy. <laughs> just coming, coming back in. It's, uh, well, it's I crazy. was going to say, I was going to say with um, Locke, uh, what was I going to say with Locke? Draw a Drew a blank. No, let's move on. I forgot what I was going to say about Locke, but uh, mm -hmm. something about that. But um, I did like, I did like Sawyer in this episode though. I like, yeah. how, I like as Jack comes up, oh, you're, you're taking, because Jack's like, you're taking Sawyer with you? He goes, well, he, he worked out a deal. <laughs> it's a very Sawyer thing to do. Um, although I guess in the next episode, he's like reading a book next to the raft when they're rebuilding. and He's not helping right. at all. No. And Michael's like, can you help? Can you, can you just you do something useful? Um, but Sawyer, that was very much a natural character thing for Like, of course, you, you see Jack in front of you. Like, of course, Sawyer bartered his way onto the, the, the ship. It just makes sense. Um, but the interesting thing for, I think, early character Sawyer, his response to Locke is something like, oh, yeah, I could have used this cabling to hold up the entire east wing of my beach house. And I'm like, there are people who really like would have just preferred to sit on the beach, build a big house and 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 live it out. Like there are definitely people on the island. It's always important to remember who are not trying to get off it. No. Locke and, and, and so Sawyer and Walt have something in common there and Locke and some others. Well. well, that's one thing I always respect about Michael is because I always I remember watching the well, how come no one's trying to get off the island? And then when Michael brings yeah. it up, even when Michael brings up people look at him like you're nuts. Yep. You know, he's like and because Jack's motto was let's survive, let's survive, let's survive. And 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 Michael's like, I need to get off this island. Now I think more of it had to I, I remember my thought. He was I he didn't he had him and Locke had friction because um Lock um Michael had already lost his son once. Right. He didn't, and, and he saw how he was attached, how Walt was attached to Locke. He didn't want to lose him again. Mm -hmm. So that was the friction he had with him. And I think that's part of his motivation to get him off the island so he could have his son away from someone like Locke and maybe, you know, to himself, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's really important. And, and, and I guess in terms of, I don't think Michael is like a, a non alpha male. Locke is the alpha male. Locke is the hunter that's going to teach his kid how to like hunt and kill and, and fish and all the, the good stuff. And Michael is an artist. Michael's there. He still wants to be as present in his boy's life as possible. And he kind of can't handle the, the, 
tension there of the ego of like, cause Locke very rudely like sticks his nose in the whole business with Michael and Walt from an early uh, point. Like maybe the first episode, even because he just sees that Walt is special and can use him. And so right. I, I think Michael's sense, cause he's very sensitive. I think his sense is that Walt uh, Locke doesn't have Walt's best interest in heart at heart. And I think that's strictly true. Yeah, oh, I agree. it's definitely true. Locks, locks, looking out for number one, a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent of the time, it's um, everything service. It's just like Dumbledore, like you said, everything services the mission with yeah. Locke. And so, yeah, this, the, the fatherly instincts were, you know, right on there. I did like the the uh, scene between Walt and uh, and uh, Locke when they're when he go, when Walt uh, asked Locke, he goes, "Did you have a cool dad?" Ha. <laughs> Yeah, and at this point, at this point, we don't know. You know, we don't know what right. Locke has gone through. I mean, obviously, that scene, him saying no, he wasn't very cool at all, uh, means a lot more after we find out what Locke's dad did to him. So yeah, Locke could have acted even, I think, worse than he did. <laughs> he did. Yeah, no, it's delivered with the right amount of weight or 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 you truism there's just a real sense that like no Locke's dad was not cool um yeah. i like that we the gradual slow build on who Locke's dad was is is really i think really satisfying oh yeah, Every, um, yeah. everything Locke ends, ends up being really satisfying he's a he's a gift he's like he's like a mix of dumbledore and snape and it's a gift he's a gift of a character as yeah if you're rolling has as, uh, well, I've been saying from the start that th this show doesn't work without Locke. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, no. Not just because you need that man of science, man of faith, but because you need you need a character who's ultimately going to buy the crazy mysteries that you're going to sell. Um, yes, you need the believer or all you have is a bunch of stuff that nobody the, wants to pay or attention the, or the, to. Or the sap, you'd say. Yeah. Yeah, he's a bit of a sap. <laughs> <laughs> this was I mean, supposed to work. <laughs> That's why I always say that's what or Locke had is, you know, he, I forget if this episode or the next episode, he says, we all have a second chance. I can't remember if it's telling Shannon, you know, Shannon or, but, Shannon, yeah. but he didn't take advantage of his second chance. As far as I'm concerned, he had, you know, he's has the ability to walk again. He, you know, he's, he's, he's a provider. He, he's, he's the king on this island because he knows how to survive on this island he can make glue he can make you know he can there's so many things he can do he, there's so many things he can do yeah he makes so glue the guy, in the, at the, he's the guy from shawshank who uh is special on the inside but on the outside all you need is a sears and roebuck <laughs> he's morgan freeman's character right that's morgan freeman yes it's morgan Red, freeman he's, he's the morgan freeman character yeah okay oh, 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 gotcha gotcha but i just oh, it's just but he but Locke says that to shannon but then i but my whole time i'm thinking well Maybe at the time I'm thinking, okay, yeah, Locke's during season one, you're thinking, yeah, okay, Locke, you can see where Locke believes that. But towards the end, Locke just, he didn't take advantage of his second chance. He got used and abused and all that fun stuff. But anymore, go ahead. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good, uh, just character note of Locke being, I mean, you called him moments ago a sap. And yeah, that's it. That's kind of his, his belief his want to believe his need to believe kind of made him very vulnerable and that was exploited too. So you have, I mean, Jack got problems too and people abuse Jack throughout the series. Sure. But ultimately Locke, I think ends up paying the ultimate sacrifice for Karen oh, yeah. so much, um, which is just a shame. I wanted to mention Mr. Paik cause it's uh, the whole, everything in this episode about uh, not only Jin asking for permission to be with son, but, having to lie to Mr. Paik about his father's death and then going and saying, I'm sorry, father, I've dishonored you. Um, Mr. Paik was like a major player. He's right up there with Charles Widmore as far right. as one of the mm -hmm. baddest, these rich men that like know about the Island or have weird ties in the background and their, their, their company or themselves have these threads that are in everybody else's plot. They're in everybody else's. And I think I, I, it was satisfying to see, the acting uh, of Mr. Paik and when, and when he's asking Jin to do these horrible things, like deliver a message. And it's like, okay, you didn't, you didn't do it right here. We're going to, we're going to go and deliver the message again. Like, I don't know. It's just, to, it's satisfying to see such a sinister bad guy and then have him not appear for two more seasons or whatever. Um, 
but he really affected Jin and Sun's relationship in such a oh, he did, yeah. negative yeah. way. Do you think he was part of the plan from the beginning, or do you think it was like a little bit of retconning later to bring him into the Widmores once we knew about that thread? Do you think it was just like this guy was really compelling? I'm gonna I need I want to bring him back and play with him, or do you think this was part of Lindelof and uh what's the other one's name? <laughs> Cuse, uh, yeah, uh, oh, uh yeah. Play, like what what do we think now that we have the the final outlaid? Probably not in the beginning, but Probably towards the end, they thought it would be a good, you know, thing to bring together. I noticed in good plotting, there's like two or three reasons why they could be on that plane in Australia. One is that they're delivering watches to clients of Mr. Pakes, and that's in this episode. Like Jin's like, okay, this will be. His father says, "Oh, make that the last thing you do." There was another line about getting the honeymoon. They never, you know, they they always wanted, and they had to push it off because of work. So it's like. Why are they on the island? And was that like a setup to the, the, for the plane to crash? I don't know if it's ever answered. I definitely don't think. I think Mr. Paik, by the time, she, I think Sun confronts her own father in like a flash forward in season three or four and is like very cold about what he may or may not know as far as, doesn't she get like contact information for like Faraday's mom or something through her own father? I, I'm forgetting now because it all got... Very, very muddled, something, but something like that. Yeah, she, she definitely implicates him in some of the grander things in the island. But I think that I think from a writing standpoint, they had Charles Woodmore and probably got like we're like we can't keep giving everything to Charles Woodmore or Alan Dale. So hey, there's this <laughs> other rich guy like Son's dad was rich. Like let's make him more of a you know Andy's a bad right. dude. Let's make him in on it. I think that was probably more of an, an afterthought. I know with me yeah. going, going way down the road when the, where Sun and Jin, you know, they die together. I always said, I said, Sun should have saved himself because he had a daughter. And I, I, I know it's like I was like a lone person on this. I mean, I had a few people on my side. But most people said, no, no, no. It was romantic how they died. I go, yeah, but who who was taking care of that daughter? The yeah. dad. So. And drowning, what a, what a way to go out. Yeah. Yeah, drowning, exactly. is, drowning is probably, next to burning, drowning is like my least. I, next I, to burning. Glad you next, yeah. uh, uh, Suffocation. Yeah, buried alive, I think, would be my worst. Oh, I guess but, suffocation uh, is drowning, but still. Yeah. yeah, buried alive is my bottom of the list. Oh, Nikki and Paolo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> ah! <laughs> There's a, if you search that GIF on Twitter, it'll pop up right away. I'm doing the getting right buried now. alive scene, it's wonderful. <laughs> What a way to end those characters. But yeah, the the God, I haven't thought about Nikki and Paolo in uh, an, a, a dog's age. Sorry, you you said buried alive. Right? That's what I. I know, to. but Always. I just completely I forgot they existed in in in, in, in a style reminiscent to Taylor Swift. I forgot they existed. So, so there is this there is this, there is this theme in this episode about starting over, about whether or not that's something you can actually do, right. and they make a really I think. In, engaging point of like sin son says um to Jin, she has like really impassioned like i was going to leave you and that's what makes him so i don't he didn't necessarily really understand it but she's like i then she says in korean i just want to start over and that's right. what he wanted he wanted to start over he was essentially on the plane to do his last job for her father and start over and so in getting the island and last in finding the island they all got some a chance to start over and that's a recurring right. theme of i think the first season is they can always start over yeah, here on the whether, whether they take advantage of it or not. Yeah. Can we talk yes. a little bit about Syed? Yes. Yeah, sure. let's do that. I just, I remember that this show was only a couple of years after 9-11. And um, a sympathetic Middle Eastern character, especially one that was involved in terror, you know, was a risk at that yeah. point still. Huge. Um, and it was really challenging, I think, to the country at that time. Um, probably, <laughs> let's not talk about what's happening now. But um, I, I appreciated it for sure. And I think this is one of the episodes where you really start to see um, those, you know, the 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 man behind the the what's the word I'm looking for? The don't want to say torture again, but torture. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that was always a good dynamic aspect of Lost for me. I agree. Definitely taking characters that you don't know a lot about their culture, you don't know a lot about them, and it's like seeing them as human. 
is super, super important. And he gets it. He said he has his work cut out for him in the beginning because Sawyer, I think in the pilot just goes up and <laughs> punches him and, and, and caught and accuses him of being a terrorist right, right. away. Several right times. Several, several, several times, actually. The, the alpha, you know, um, Southern white maleness. He's, he's like of, of Sawyer. I don't, can't remember if he's Southern or not, but yeah, he's, he's calling back to that sort of like, Appalachian, like that, that stereotype in America, yeah. right? It's a whistle yeah. to that. And yeah. the friction between them, like, thank God they presented it because it would have been really unrealistic had that yeah. not, not been there. Yeah. But in this episode and the next one, Sawyer's just, or Saeed is able to just go off his merits, you know, as a, as a navigator, as a, as a, as a human being. He's, he's that conversation with Boone, the conversation with Shannon. Like, you just see that he's, a, he's, he's a perfectly wonderful man. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what you say. It was a risk, but they did such yeah. a great job on his character that you you don't even I I did, I don't remember thinking about that. I mean, but you like you said, yeah. you, only when Sawyer brings it up, you're like going because so because Said is such he's one of the he's one of the favorite you know my, one of my favorite characters on the show. So it's yeah. like, absolutely, and it makes Sawyer um, that much more like that much harder to love. You know, right. Uh, but yet again, over and over and over again with Lost, these people that you think, I don't, I don't like you. Your flaws are big, honking. I'm going to, you know, um, over time, they're sort of irresistible. But Sawyer didn't want to be loved. He wanted to be hated. Yes. Mm -hmm. he want, he want, and he wanted want, want everyone to be, suffer as, as much as he does. Sure. But, I, you know, if <laughs> wanting to be hated doesn't forgive uh, rampant racism, <laughs> you know? So um, <laughs> yeah. it is, uh, it is uh, 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 quite a feat. The way they've really, the way they, they spend time on and delve into these guys. For yeah, sure. that was a great job. Well, we can move on to numbers, and uh, my first note was about Saeed. Cool. Uh, he he doesn't want to. He's upset with. Uh, he doesn't want to go find the batteries. With uh, Rousseau, he doesn't, he doesn't want to go back there. Right. Well, at the at the end of the last episode, Hurley ran out of batteries in his Walkman. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's the worst. that might be the worst moment for me in all of Lost. I because you imagine yourself in that situation and you're just like, just, just, just pulling, you know, trying to drag it out. You're gonna have juice for only so long. You try, and then you know it's gone forever. Urgh, horrible until was, they get the hatch. I was watching. Oh yeah, until they get the hatch. But I was watching uh, the the Lost in or in dot 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 in translation and. Uh, Hurley's on the beach at the very, very end of it. I'm like, oh, I forgot when Hurley could like walk around with his disman. There's like mm -hmm. beautiful music. There's these wonderful vignettes of like what all the other characters are doing. And then right, he lays down against a tree and the battery's dying. I'm like, oh. But the next episode's all about finding a battery. So I'm right. like, I, there's some hope. There's Isn't definitely that, that like that like moment though of like when it stops. It's just yeah. Like, oh, that sucks. Maybe <laughs> maybe maybe they yeah. uh, a professor from Gilligan's Island should have been on the plane. <laughs> right, so. their radio seemed to also, have plenty of batteries <laughs> also disc man i'm just saying disc man who yeah. had a disc man here i mean Did i had i had like a i think i had the sony equivalent was it like a walkman cd player yeah, i had i had a, walkman, I had a walkman I, had a I, I didn't have a disc man i had a mini disc player i was old and all those things then finally yield god of eye showed up and uh that was that. It's amazing how technology has, has changed. But uh, Melissa, I think you brought this up. Numbers brings us to the numbers. And like I said, I was going insane. I, I think I spent a whole day trying to figure out the numbers, different combinations, different uh, later on. Well, later on, because sure. we find out the numbers are more important. And I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I, I, I could have done without the numbers myself. Oh, so I don't remember. I don't remember in the fullness of Lost because so much happened between season one, which is the season I really love, and the end. Did it, was it ever explained? Do we know? Or were there just various things the numbers were useful for? Like, wasn't it what you typed into the thing in the hatch? Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah, I that know, was another... I, I know it was like the lottery and, you know, and all that, but there was never like, an, like, a, like a this is why... The closest we get, I think, in the final season, they go to that like cliffside, Jacob's cliffside retreat, right? And there's the cave, like painting, like each of the survivors. Oh God, I forgot e all of this. Each of the survivors had a number corresponding to them. I think, which right, is, they were like sitting in those seats on the plane. Yeah, they were candidates. 
You know, yeah, that they, they, was like their candidate number somehow. And there was a sundial whole thing and like everybody <laughs> had. It. Well, like, yeah, I think the satisfying, the, 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 the payoff for the numbers was not, I think, no. satisfying. And that's where it's different from a, a show or a piece of fiction that has a designated end date, right? If this was Harry Potter and this was a major clue that had been set out in the first book, there would be a reason that you found out. Yep. at the end and i think that they just um it was sort of like the snake biting biting its own tail a little bit because the thing of the numbers got so huge so enormous yeah everybody was trying everybody had the answer everybody theorizing everybody knew that it could never come up with something that was really satisfactory for it you know well i think season season one caught them off guard because i, I who what show it was ever picked apart before like loss was, I mean, it's no. just like, okay, we're going to do these, we'll throw these numbers in the fans will have some fun with it. And then we'll move on to something yeah. else. And there's like, Oh my God, what are those numbers? The numbers, the numbers, the numbers. It's like, Oh my God, I, I can remember just going and sleep. can't sleep at night, but I'm trying to think about what could possibly <laughs> go on with the numbers. The yeah. Numbers are Dumbledore's gleam of triumph. That's what the numbers are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Which, which is like, Oh, well, it we'll ended explain. up being what you thought it was. Yeah. In the end. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. About what it is. Yeah. Like the, the whole like explanation of like, well, the numbers represent the main characters who are main characters because they haven't been killed off at this point. It's like, so we'll say, who's still alive? We got Jack, Locke, Hurley, Sawyer. Okay, so Jack is four, Locke is eight, Sawyer is 15. It's literally like, who's who's still alive? We're going to say these right. are their numbers. That's, right. But I think a theme of this episode, a theme of the episode titled Numbers was you make your own luck. Uh, that's what the Australian <laughs> widow says to... Hurley, and that is yeah. very much the arc of his arc in this episode is trying to escape the numbers, but you can't escape no. the numbers. So I like the idea. I like, I mean, I don't like necessarily that they never had like a bigger answer, but I remember relishing whenever a number would show up in an episode, like mm -hmm. even as late as season five with that episode 316 as the other plane that crashes on the island. I'm right. like, right. ah, 16. I love it. I'm just right. like, it's, it became something where if you caught it, it was like an in joke, like you catch it and you're like, this is great. This is great. We did think, I think as a fandom that all the 16s would be related to one another. All the mm -hmm. 23s would be related to each other. And I just, it didn't there were links to Bible passages. I remember. Yes. Oh, the 23rd Psalm. 316 was the and 316 yeah. yes there was a lot of that a lot of like the things you go to when you're looking for patterns the way you try to like think like a writer you know like what mm -hmm. could this possibly mean yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's funny doing the rewatch the numbers come up in earlier episodes but you don't you, I, only reason i know is because i'm rewatching it yeah and I'm like, oh eight didn't notice that 23 you know it, it's all these i think uh the farmer that kate I think he owed twenty three million or so. There was uh, the numbers just kept coming up, and you're like going, nice. so they had so they had something planned for the numbers because when people always go, oh, they made it up as they go along, which I don't understand why people complain about that. As long as it's good, who cares? But yeah. they did have certain plans, and the numbers to there will be like all the numbers were mentioned at least once as you're yep. going right. through the uh, thing. Before it's like explicitly said, pointed out, yeah, because right. there's no going back once it's pointed out. Yeah, because um, you first what first happens you. I didn't, you know, it's just a number, but uh, after that, it's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Right. So yeah. it's, just, it's just kind of crazy. And the bad luck that Hurley has, I mean, it's kind of, it's not funny, but. It, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually funny. I, I would, I would, I would say at this point, I made, I made yeah. a list like, okay, Grandpa Tito has a heart attack and, and dies right yeah. at, during the news right. broadcast. Been working uh, three jobs for 50 something, something years. <laughs> survives it all until, until then. Uh, right. Then his brother, um, <laughs> well, oh, well, Father Aguilar, the priest at his at Grandpa's funeral, gets struck by lightning. Right. <laughs> his brother Diego is left. Uh, his wife Lisa leaves him for a waitress. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. He he. Okay, the, happy. The house fire. The broken ankle. I'm just Hitler. like like I I this sh this episode makes a really compelling case for Hurley actually being cursed. <laughs> yeah. No. It, yeah. And that come like that is pulled from life. I don't know if you've read any of these crazy lottery winner stories, but lottery winners have it is statistically impossible bad luck, early deaths, bankruptcy, there and lots of other things as well. Lot it's like almost like you do not want to win the lottery. Um I I just do some do some googling like in, in your spare in your spare time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a real thing. And so it was funny it was you know, funny and tragic, 
Um, but it, it also pokes at the idea like of fate. Like the numbers are this giant honking fate bell that happens all over this whole this whole series. It's on the hatch. It's you know the things you punch in. It's the lottery numbers. It's this. It's that. Um, it's Lenny. It's what it's Lenny. Lenny. Leonard Leonard Sims, the oh my, I, and, and, and the numbers playing Connect Four, and also when he tells me he played the numbers, what do you mean you played the numbers? Yeah. <laughs> you open the box, yeah. You open the box, don't open the box, yeah, um, yeah. But it all comes back to these transmissions, and I was blown away by the uh, cameo by Rousseau. Mm -hmm. after after a couple episodes off, it's like let's go see the French chick, and like she's actually in the episode too. I love the crazy French trick angle. Like the, I know she's not crazy in the end, but like the idea of um, there's this crazy French trick who lives in who lives in the jungle is just like a um, um, delightful twist. On, you know, it's like it's really almost as on. exotic as the polar bear, but with a more satisfying yes. kind of conclusion. Yes, <laughs> this, yeah, this this episode has some. It obviously, was funny. I mean, it had a lot of you know funny scenes, but you could see how Hurley would think he was cursed because everything was happening around him. But he takes off going after the French chick, Rousseau, and uh, I like when he's standing on the pressure, the, the, the pressure plate, and, uh, plate, and then and, and, and was it? So he says, "We got to get something the same weight." <laughs> <laughs> and Charlie goes, "How are we supposed to find that?" Because <laughs> you know, it obviously. Oh. I, I just, I just thought it was a fun. It was just a oh. funny episode. It just one of the fit my favorite uh, uh, moments that sticks out to me in the series is that you know when they were there was there were news articles about like would the actor have would jorge garcia have to lose a bunch of weight because they're right. on this island right and finally somebody it was almost like they were going meta and poking at the at the audience and finally somebody asked him how are you not losing weight and he, he sort of like sheepishly admits like i'm down three belt sizes okay and it's really is really sweet and then of course they have the hatch and the food drops and that 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 all becomes a non-issue uh but uh yeah they had a lot of they had a lot of fun with 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 uh, like like a lot of like self-effacing fun it's actually, not exactly actually, yeah. doing the rewatch it was charlie that asked him that did it was it yeah because it was a funny scene they're going back and forth he goes dude i'm down i think it was it was, might have been even four might have been the four? number like, i don't yeah. know belt loops, belt loops. But, yeah, yeah yeah but it, that, that was a funny scene it's definitely a less um, aware time when you talk about uh, body size and stuff like right. that. But they, yeah, they they had to, they had to thread the needle a little bit. Yeah, well, and but, and, 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 and spry. he's spry. He jumps out of the way of the giant yeah, stabby, like, jabby, yeah, stabby he's thing. Fine. Yeah. Well, and he's a deer. He just wants a hug from the French lady. He meets the French. They have that moment where yeah. she's like, "I never thought I was." I never thought about it too hard. I am cursed. The numbers are cursed. The numbers brought me here. They brought me nothing but grief. And he just gets a hug and yeah. like she gives him a free battery. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I can part with this. Like, never mistake the, never underestimate the power of human connection, man. Just yeah. these people separated yeah. by time and space and distance. And Russo's lost more than Hurley's ever lost, too. Yeah. But they can all meet at the numbers they can have this shared experience or it's like the shared grief and it and leads to a, a happy what, ending a lot of what hurley brings i mean that's like a lot of what hurley brings to all these people he's this dear heart he's this deeply compassionate awesome person he's a lot of these people are you know not people that without the intensifying crucible of of looking through their lives so closely in the the, the in this show would i want to hang out with you know, uh, yeah. And Hurley is someone. He's really very right. glue-like to this whole group. Yeah. Yeah. Most of them are terrible people. Most of them are pretty bad. Yeah. Most of them but are not great. But but Hurley's so obsessed with the numbers, he's not even thinking about the danger he's putting himself no. in by going off on by himself to find Rousseau. Yeah, he's kind of. I think he's doing what the other characters inevitably do at one point, which is just like tempt fate. Like I, I, I have a mission. Like he, he's found his mission to do right. Like everybody else had their own. Mm -hmm. Got to prove myself. Right. Got to follow my destiny thing. And Hurley didn't really yeah, have that until. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So baby, <laughs> he was late to it, but just because the writings on the map or whatever, he's like, okay, this is this is this is my mission. Is I have to go get see if I can get some answers. And I like that like when presented with it, he was able to be brave about just ignoring the, the obvious threat and danger to him. Well, um, even when she was shooting at him. 
Yeah. I mean, she, he, I mean, she didn't like to have the gun pointed in his face, but he wasn't, he, he didn't really wasn't afraid. He just yeah. he needed to know what those, what, what, why she had those numbers written down. Yeah. And I think that's sort of what being cursed will do to you too. It's like, <laughs> you know, he's like, well, I have been through a lot. Now I've been through a plane crash. I'm still ticking. At least he thought. And, you know, um, sure. Bring it on me. Throw it at me. What you got? Do you think that Hurley, because Hurley was always supposed to be like from the fan, he was supposed to be like from the fans. He was talking to the fans. You think the writers knew early on the numbers were going to drive us crazy, and that's how we were would act if you know we need to know what's going on with the numbers. So maybe Hurley, maybe the writers did that early on. I think you needed somebody on the show to act that way because it would be really weird if nobody was that interested in all of this. And you also right. needed somebody who wasn't as self-involved as all the rest of the people because everybody's about their own thing. And he's just like, no, I have a mystery. I have to figure like, that's interest that this is the most interesting thing to me, as opposed to everybody's sort of like personal dramas that they're having. My favorite scene of, of uh, Hurley t- t- is when, when he tells Jack, <laughs> Jack is like, Hurley, they're numbers. Right. <laughs> right. So he right. had, he constantly had enough people telling him, that it was nothing, right. but you kept, on the other hand, you kept seeing these numbers play such a huge role. And by the time you get in the hatch and it's just like, no, 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 there's definitely something going on with the numbers. Like at this yeah, point, right. you can't say they're just numbers, but enough characters were like very like treating it as if they were still real people who didn't live on a magic island that moved. Right. right. And you have like Jack and as as the showrunners and Hurley as the fans. And maybe we should, should have been a little bit prophetic. <laughs> like, yeah. look, they're numbers. Sometimes they're special. Sometimes <laughs> they're not. Just don't over well, that was, it. That was a perfect line from Jack. That's how Jack is, though. Yeah. You know, matter. You know, they're just numbers. They don't mean anything. Jack's a jerk. I don't like Jack. <laughs> In the fullness of time, I like Jack less and less. Not oh, wow. Um, I, can, I can take it. Not you. <laughs> I just, I just, he's, a, he's just like a very... Um, yeah, I need to rewatch the whole series again, but my I remember very clearly um, just liking him less and less as time went on. I, I think he was put in a position where he didn't, he didn't want to be... He just wanted to be the doctor. Yeah, but you know, there's, there's also a scene earlier on where where uh, where Claire gets taken, where Locke actually where Locke said something that made sense. You're the doctor. Go back. We don't need you. We need you to take care of people. But Jack didn't. You know, Jack didn't listen. Locke was 100 percent correct on that. It's his uh, white male savior syndrome thing that bothers me. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of those in the world, in fiction, and in this particular fiction, very much so. Um, and like best of intentions and is awesome he would he just wanted so badly to be everybody to everyone like a hero so bad i think he wanted to be the opposite of his dad because always comes sure. back this show was is all about daddy issues so i think he uh his oh, dad oh, was yeah. such an arrogant selfish jerk totally. so and you know it just at, over time it created but i will give that plenty of people like jack <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I, I i definitely i would love to rewatch with that in mind for jack mm-hmm. too I was always kind of impartial. I was like, I recognize the show's need to have a Jack. Um, And I thought his backstory was always very, like pretty interesting. Um, It was compelling for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They managed to make it for a guy who should have, or was going to die in the pilot. I'm thrilled that they extended that through the whole season, the series. (laughs) Um, Right. Yeah. I just remember him sort of lecturing somebody on how much water, they needed per day and why we had they had to go a certain way like he, he and Locke were fighting about which direction they should take early on uh mm. and it was very much man of science man of faith right like this is right. like that this sets up the whole arc of the whole series i'm not arguing for Locke. i just think these guys are uh uh com- beautifully complicated characters that i can like dislike in some manner yes yeah. they'll love this the story and and still experience it fully I think that's 100% true. Speaking of Locke, is it Locke that falls out the window behind the accountant? I see. I, I, can't, I think that was a theory, but I don't think that's what it was. I, don't I remember think the it, theory. I don't okay. believe it is. Okay. I mean, I could be getting hate mail right now, but I don't think I don't think it was. That was the theory. I mean, I, I don't know who came up with it, but I said, that's a brilliant theory. Because that came up before I think people even knew about his dad because 
because Lock because Hurley owns the company that Lock works for. And they mention that like five seconds before a man falls out the window. So right. The box company is definitely Lock's company. It's a box company in Tustin. How many box yeah. companies in Tustin could there possibly be? Um, but yeah, it was. I think for a laugh when they wrote the episode, they're like, "Oh yeah," and either some guys either committing suicide or falling out a window because it'll be like super funny. But having Lock, having Lock's dad eventually do that. Yeah, I don't think the timeline adds up. And it's also after Hurley won the lottery and tried actively to fix that. It's a little too close to the plane crash. Yeah. That because Locke has to have his whole healing process over months and years and gradually, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think it's probably not Locke. So I did a little, I did a little, the old, the old Google, and apparently the answer is no. That it's not yeah. the same. It's I know not, that was a big theory. I was trying to remember it all, but I, I, but I, I remember the theory and I remember it very, you know, very, very, th that's, that's the beauty and the fun. So today we're seeing so many shows just give us their entire series at once. Right. And I think I can't, I cannot stress. I mean, I love to binge a show over the weekend. That's great for me, mm -hmm. but boy, does that hurt the, the fan interaction and the fun that oh, you yeah. have, you know, if we hadn't had a week between each episode and, you know, time between each seasons, would we be picking apart things like this? And would, would, would the fandom have grown so big? Would lost, imagine if you got all of lost all one season at a time, you know, yeah. it's not the same. It's like, as if you got all seven Harry Potter books at the time, it's, it's not, yeah. it's not the same. You're right. Well, that's, yeah. that's the argument now. If if they reboot it or re or you know do a sequel or whatever they're or prequel, whatever they're planning on doing, because they will do it. Is sure. well, should it be binged or should it be once a week? And I Make hope they do it once a week. I hope they Make do that. Us suffer. <laughs> that even weird. back then it wasn't. It was like they'd show two episodes, they'd be off for three weeks. Show two more episodes, be off for two. It, it wasn't even consistent week to, to week to week because they had to get put it in the uh, what did they had the uh, ratings months where they had the uh wherever they had put a special month to get mm -hmm. nielsen yeah. ratings get the higher ratings that that week which never made sense to me but, but now it's just all about downloads and whatever and that's great but you're not going to build up like game of thrones would not have if you if you got the full season of game of thrones in a weekend that would not have been the way no yeah, yeah you'd, you'd get people who were stands for it on twitter saying it's really good you got to see it it would be word of mouth but it wouldn't right. be the sensation that it was no um for sure definitely definitely for sure i'm trying to think of this as a, a moment of misdirection but i liked how in numbers uh and people know the way to find the french chick is to pull the wire on the beach yeah but the wire the wire on the beach actually has nothing to do with the french chick it's just how saeed happened to find her the first time it leads him to the general vicinity but the wire is all about the looking glass station right it's the power to the looking which we yeah, don't the water hatch, yeah yeah, we don't see that till the end of season three. And so it's nuts that like five, six episodes into season one. And then again, in this episode, there's this wire on the beach. For like, what's going on? Like, that's that's as weird or weirder than a hatch in the ground, I think. That, that was my one claim to fame, because when I when I saw the season two and we see the hatch had power, I go, there's got to be a hatch going an underwater hatch. There has to be. There has to be more hatches, and then it turned out to be this hatch, hatch, hatch all over the place. There I, you go. I think it was one lockdown for the one, first time. One time know. in six years, I was right. Uh, uh. Six, <laughs> the only one and only time. But uh, yeah, it's just, uh. I always said, I go, I would have gone the other way. I would have gone into the water with it, not into the jungle with it. Yeah. Right. The yeah. cable. That, that's just me. I'm, well, I'm so glad they explored that, that it's not just an open ended kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So obviously they had, they, you know, again, they had plans for everything down the road. I did want to mention, I go, we have, uh, Locke is, has brought Claire in to help him build, build something. He's kind of asking her for, you think he was doing it to get information from her or was he really trying to get him on, on his side? Maybe, you know, cause he's still trying to get, manipulate people. What was, what was the thought behind, what was, what was he doing? What was Locke up to? Was he just building up her a cradle for good to be nice? Yeah. I think Locke always yeah. has an angle, but I think ultimately yeah. he was doing the he was doing the right thing. I think I think Locke felt some kind of pressure from time to time on the show to be a human being, like to the other human beings that he's that he's with. I think, right. um, and because he could, he did right. He he could build a crib for this baby. It's 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 also a very it's a need they have that he can fix. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so I liked that 
for that reason. Also, by this point, you're starting to wonder about Locke. You're starting to um, pull away from him probably a little bit because it's just like just like with Jack, there's 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 forces pulling you, you know. And it's mm-hmm. a little just bit of humanity and a reminder that he is a caring person. I know I joke about you know it's all out for number one, but the cradle was really an actually you know beautiful moment. And also they have a lot of time. There's they're deserted on an island. And, you know, I project. thought that, <laughs> you know? I, I thought the same thing, but when he was asking her, what do you remember? Because he's he's obsessed with the others. I mean, he's so oh. well, we don't know that the others yet, but he's he wants to know what happened to her. So I kind of think, oh wait, is Locke just trying to get information? Is he trying to because I don't know. I don't I don't I'm I don't trust Locke, so I'm yeah. Right, I think it's yeah. yeah, I think it's fair to have like um an angle. Maybe he's asking like yeah. he yeah. he always seemed to know more than he lets on. And right. if he's communing with the island much as we see him do in a couple episodes or with Boone or whatever, mm-hmm. it's possible that he's looking for more insight into who the other people are. I mean, right. He's just had his big speech, the speech that is featured in every previously every. on Lost, yeah. every previously on Lost for, for yep. the next, for the rest of this season. And any big episode thereafter dealing with the others is always that speech yep. that is given in the, in the episode before. But like, so I think maybe the writers are in that position of he is gonna, he has an angle with the others. Like he's really trying to, to figure it out. Also the, his pure motivation, like his pure thrill that he can be useful um really drives him and so that might be a lot of it as well like the fact i there are so many shots and scenes of Locke just looking at something quizzically and sort of be and right and like thrilling to use his senses and his faculties in a fuller way than he could before the crash and it's um this desire to be useful i think also feeds into feeds into that this is a thing that i can do i'm 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 gonna figure out what's on what's what's going on here. Nobody else is paying attention to this. I am also I can do this thing, so I'm gonna do it. You know. Well, that's where he could he could have been he could have been useful. He could, but he had this need to be he wanted to be the leader. He wanted to be in charge. He wanted people to do things his way. And you can see it in his backstory. You know, his dealings with Randy, his dad, his mom, mm-hmm. everybody else down the. You know, he was always put down and. And I think he wanted to, but the backstory show that he didn't have the mental, he was a good soldier. He was someone, if I was going to battle, I'd want Locke on my side. Oh, yeah. But only only if he was paying attention, you know, following orders, because he just seems to go off on his own. And, you know, but again, you look at his backstory and you can see why he did what he did. Right. Mm-hmm. I'd have to re when she says that she's giving Aaron up for, or giving the baby up for adoption or plan to, knowing that Locke himself was adopted. Mm-hmm. Um, does he mention that in the scene? I, I can't remember. He, I don't, I don't know if he does or not. No, I don't think he does, but I, you, uh-huh. you, uh, you, I think he does because we don't know yet that he was adopted, right? Right. That's not yeah. until way later, but he, he does respond to it in a way that, well, it's we know now. So well, it's that, yeah, it's that, that's cool. That, that esoteric lock look. That you could like move any one of them. <laughs> the, look, any well, episode. He's a writer's best friend. It could mean anything. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. He just that's what that's what very quizzically. That's what actors on mystery shows were put on this planet to do is look as have a look that could mean five different things. Yeah, exactly. Kind, kind of like a soap opera? No, I guess not. But, uh, that, that look where they just give that stun look. I, I did want to end up on uh, I did like the scene between Charlie and Hurley at the end. Where Charlie, you know, spills his guts out, you know, on the plane. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. getting, I can't even go on a plane without shooting up, you know, getting high on heroin <laughs> and stuff like that. And so tell me a story. And then he tells him, you know, I'm worth $156 million. Yeah. And then Charlie gets mad and walks away. Great. It's fine. Great. Don't tell me. Fine. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I spill my guts and you just leave me. Yeah. <laughs> All I get is jokes. Yeah. 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 I it's mean, the, the Hurley and Charlie friendship you know hold hold my heart yeah. it's uh yeah. it's very much in uh, becoming to be in in, in full force and right <laughs> yeah it's but if, cool. if someone told me they they won the lottery and worth 156 million i probably wouldn't believe them either right well if i if we were on a magical deserted island oh. i probably would expand my overton window a little bit um <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> tiny bit of what's believable. Well, sure, you're worth 150. Okay, I'm um, sure. Spider Woman. Um, <laughs> we're just gonna go from there. Yeah. But yeah. Anything else about numbers? I'm trying to think through my notes here. The um, I love the the joke about or like the number of beans in the jar had something to do with the numbers. Yeah, in Australia <laughs> they got it exact to the bean. Had been solved in what 40, 50 years or something. Yeah, like that. 40, 40 years he's been running that, but apparently he had fifty thousand dollars to give after that. So pretty good stuff. It's just yeah, the numbers being so interwoven throughout. Like it's it's bold for the show to do an episode strictly about this, saying this is a thing that we're doing now, or or these are these are there because that's it's one of the biggest mysteries of the show, and the show isn't gonna like hide it in the background and make us ask the questions. It's literally going. Okay, here's a big mystery for you guys to solve. Have at it. Have at it. Yeah. And and that I think is a very bold move for a show to do because it because if people are engaged, they're going to be engaged. Now you started this, you, like we're going to be paying attention now that you've explicitly like you created right. some question, some ambiguity, but mostly you're saying watch us do this to you. Right, and we know where we're going, and just trust us. Yeah. And I think we forgot to mention in the, in the first one in translation, Hurley is on TV in the secretary's uh, house. Yeah. She, she's yeah. watching, I guess, one, winning the lottery or something like that. So yeah, there was a lot of that going on that you had to go, oh, yeah, that's, I love forgot that about stuff. that. I love that stuff so much. The little pieces of narrative thread that connect. Um, that's one of the reasons that Lost was, was and is so narratively interesting. Um, my, la my, my last little thing is a, a little comment, a little meta comment. Um, so Claire helps Locke build this thing. Um, and it's a great moment when he like flips it over. It's like, oh, look, we've been building a cradle like all this time. How did, really? Did it escape her attention that it was a cradle? It looks like a trap. It looks like a cage. Yeah. I mean, cradles are little baby jails. They really, <laughs> they really be or, thinking or that about thing, it. Or the thing that Russo had set up when Hurley was on. Yeah, there. yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't buy it. She was still shocked. He was shocked. She, he, he made glue. Listen, Claire is not really smart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> fair, fair point. <laughs> but no, but I, I think it is. No, it's the camera angle. And it's yeah. that he made no, glue. Like, And it's a great TV thing. But when you go yeah. back at it, it's just like, all right, I roll. Maybe yeah. it's one of those things where you know how someone gives you a gift and you know what it is, but they want you to be surprised. Right. So you just you have, you have to act surprised. Oh, oh my gosh, thank you. Here, I made you something. You made it too. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole thing is Locke gets her help building it. She's like, I don't want to exactly. really build this <laughs> She's like, I gave myself half a cradle. Hurrah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the best gifts are the ones you make for yourself. Absolutely. Exactly. Especially when you don't know you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Did she do anything? I mean, I saw her with the saw. Did she? Did Doesn't she like actually? Hand, doesn't she like hand him? Yeah, I think she handed him the glue. I know that. In the in the the tradition of lots of female characters, forever they're standing there helping the helping the guy do the thing. Yep. Well, at least in this episode, uh, there's when, when female characters are lost, though. When this episode, we see someone running through the jungle and they fall. It's Hurley. Because usually they save that for a female character where they, oh, oh my ankle, I, you know, I yep. tripped over her or something like that. Yeah. 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 And I, I joke because it's fun to joke, but Lost actually has a great diversity of characters. And that's one of the most compelling things about it. Yep. It always Male and female. Like and it's yeah. Yeah. Got to make the jokes or, you know, we laugh so that we don't cry. <laughs> and, well, and Claire really does get the short end of the character stick, I think, in the end. Totally. Um, her, her unexplained absences across vast, like, entire seasons, and mm -hmm. they did not do justice Ooh, to the baby. And, Yeah, it did not. Bye-bye. Mm. But, but did you guys, I wanted to ask, uh, either of you, have you ever played the lottery with the numbers? Because I have. Oh, I have, I yeah. think I did once back then. There is an example of it in 2012 or something. It came close to being the numbers. Somebody, yeah. I, and now that you're saying I'm having like a vague ghost memory of that being a new yeah. story that somebody came real close or like the numbers that came up were real close. The numbers were really close. They weren't exact, but it's, but I often, whenever I play the Powerball, I get six tickets uh, and, and I, and I do all the variations. So like four, eight, 12, 16, 15 with the number 42. And then mm -hmm. there's one where it doesn't work because the number's too high. So you have to like 
right. adjust it. But I, I, I do five or six of the things. And I, I do that from time to time. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> clearly I'm not taking the show's message of the curse. Yeah. If you win on those numbers, we may lose touch. <laughs> <laughs> it's a risk I'm willing to take. <laughs> but it was uh, 600 million. <laughs> no, yeah, eight hundred fifteen million, twenty-three, two hundred thirty thousand four hundred dollars after tax. It just be nuts. Um, but it, it's funny because what numbers do you play, right? And why? And and Hurley has one of the most compelling. Like people just do birthdays, like and that, and you know. But Hurley has one of the most compelling is stories of them all. I think, right? Yeah. And yeah, the writers, the writers did a great job with that. Like I said, that we've talked about a hundred times. The numbers drove people crazy. I mean, it really. Well, and 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 what a good character arc to show Hurley in an institution, having been yeah. institutionalized, and that right. was before that was before the numbers. He was institutionalized. Right. That's how he meets Leonard, and so it's. I know that comes up later with Libby and and the Dave episode in particular. But like Hurley was not as in terms of diversity. Here you have a character who is not of me of complete mental fortitude at all times. Right. And he had been to therapy and had been to a mental institution. Like that's fantastic for mm -hmm. showing different characters. Absolutely. Well, he does tell Charlie in this episode, I'm not crazy. Yeah. I think he does say, I, so, I don't want to use that word, but he, he did tell, cause uh, Charlie was saying, you're a loon. You're, you know, you're going, loon. Yeah, I'm not like, crazy dude. And he like gets all up, up in his. In his right. Face. Yeah. Yeah. Love the episode. I, I love yeah. what Lost is doing. Are you, season one, Lost. I'm going. Great. I'm going back. This has convinced me to go back and uh, re-experience the whole thing. Somewhere in the middle of season four, I know I'm going to get real, real pissed. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you go in with your eyes open. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. With me, I've said this. Every, I think every time it's hard to stop at two. Yeah. Can I stop? I go. I stopped. In fact, actually, this way, I'm. I'm actually doing it out of order. Mm. This one I'm doing one tomorrow night. That's the two episodes before this one. Oh. So I, I'm, try, I'm trying to. I was trying to. That's why I wrote a lot of notes because I wanted to make sure I didn't uh, step on it. But uh, yeah, it's it's hard to because it, it's they go. The eighth. Do what? I'm making. A, I'm making. A so you, so you did, the fourth. So you, the did, eighth, the uh, you did twenty three and sixteen before eight and fifteen, huh? Exactly. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh those numbers. Uh, <laughs> Was well, that it? it? Yeah. Yeah. This so. was a lot of fun. A lot, a lot of fun. fun. It's amazing how, how you, you think it's, oh, it's only last like 20, 30 minutes, but we're an hour and 16 minutes in. Wow. You get oh, no, only we, two episodes. Eric and I have been talking about Harry Potter for literally 15 years with no end in sight. So I, I, I give you guys credit for that. That's, that's a, cause I thought I was done with loss, but then it just keeps, it just keeps I'm pulling me back. So glad you're not. Yeah. yeah I am. Did you have that moment of like, we have to go back. I have to go back. <laughs> yeah, people have been, you know, because Jay and I did one loss rewatch and we started another one. We didn't finish it. We kind of gave up after the, not gave up, but he had two kids and got married and, you know, just life got Stop in the way. It. It's, and we never said we weren't going to go back and do it. It just, it's on hold. So we have to go back someday. Exactly. We have to go back eventually. And it's, I think it's been Imagine long. Imagine if that's what he said. Imagine <laughs> if that's what Jack said. We have to go back, you know. Eventually, pick a day. <laughs> yeah, but that that's that scene is one of the, <laughs> no, the more it's... more most important. You know, I remember. I still, I'm glad I wasn't spoiled on that scene. I know people that were spoiled on it. We have to go back. Oh, that sucks. That yeah. sucks. That was a huge, huge pivot point. Because I I had no clue. I had no clue. I said we have to go back. Go back to what? Yeah. I said oh. anyway. But I appreciate you guys jo joining me. That it's been great fun Thanks for having us. We can talk about another two hours. Thanks for having us. No, th thank you. Anything else you guys want to talk about again? To promote that's after the seventeenth. Oh, um, you'll be sleeping, anything? right? I will be sleeping <laughs> so hard, like hardcore sleeping. Broadway con. That's what I got after that. Yeah, yeah. I got. I got. I think a month to hit the gym as much as I've been wanting to <laughs> just lots of sleep and exercise and taking care of me. I did so much. I'm doing so much travel, so it's, it's nuts, but uh, that's fun, right? Cause we're, well, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was a lot of fun, but like the weekend after leaky, I'm going to be in Philadelphia for a cousin's wedding. So I'm staying in Boston mm -hmm. and 
like driving and renting a car and driving home to PA and this whole thing. So I'm going to be gone from Chicago for 10 days. I was just in New York. I was in Orlando before that. So just wow. seeing Chicago. I'm wow. Oh, and I'm looking for a new roommate. So I have to, I have to show the place when I'm home in Chicago to like try and get more roommates in. So this is kind of nuts, but yeah, so looking forward to sleep. Maybe they'll get a Harry Potter or a lost fan. That'd be nice. Wouldn't it? Yeah. Harry, uh, like a Harry Potter lost crossover fandom. Yeah. There you go. I mean, yeah. we definitely, that's definitely where our paths meet <laughs> for sure. There's a yeah. lot of okay, heroes, right? Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of crossover in these communities because it's, it's a TV version of the way the books were yeah. plotted mostly. <laughs> that's yeah. That's a great way of looking at that. I, I didn't yeah. make the connection on my own, but that's a hundred percent true. All that clue hunting, all that. I mean, I grew up reading Nancy Drew really like there you that's, go. that's Actually, where I, I did too, but I got picked yeah. on. So I had to stop. Mm. That's that's she was great. It was it was the sixties. You know you could honestly when you go back and read the Nancy like the original Nancy Drew books these days, there are some problematic messages for young girls in them. But I hope that they are addressing. There's going to be a new television series too. I saw I saw the banner for that. Excited. Looks dark and amazing. I liked the movie. I saw the movie recently. There was a movie. The the one where she's like the young girl, the Emma Roberts. Emma Roberts is that her? She looks like Emma Roberts. I think I it's Emma Roberts. Huh. Yeah. Like maybe. young Emma Roberts doing it. Okay. Yeah. Really fun movie. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. I love Nancy Drew. I don't know how we got on Nancy Drew, but. It was brought up. <laughs> mystery. 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 That's right. And Mary Club. I guess I'm trying to think, is there a character on the show who is like a detective mystery? Not really. Right. Anna Lucia, right? Oh, yeah. Right. She was... yeah. Oh, there you go. So there's your mystery. So when watching she's season like two, dete- I'll... yeah, yeah, no, she's um, like a detective, detective, not like a Nancy Drew gumshoe detective, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like an actual yeah. detective. Somebody who's examining clues and getting to the bottom of it. I guess it was... Mag- Magnum's not on the island, so right. Angela Lansbury, <laughs> she is not. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, Jack. Thank you, Jack. No, thank you.